I've had a chance to go through the file that I had on Jack Connor. It is in excellent shape. He had New York counsel prepare a trust instrument for him after I had talked to them at some length, and they prepared what I believe to be a very good one. He took the stocks that he had, put them up with the Morgan guarantee under this trust instrument. They had the right to invest and reinvest and sell all during the period of his tenure as Secretary of Commerce, and they were not to notify him of what they did. And uh, that went, uh, that worked out all right for commerce. I have a copy of that trust instrument. I also have a copy of the letter which he wrote to Senator Magnuson, the chairman of the Commerce Committee, which could serve as a good uh, model for uh, your friend to use. So that uh, I would say that he's in quite good shape on the matter, even in the Connor situation, he had more stock coming from Merck, and so arrangement was made that when that stock was issued as a bonus plan, it would be sent directly to the Morgan Guarantee under the trust instrument. He had further complications of serving on some very important boards like General Motors and General Foods. He resigned from those. So that it covers, I think, everything that uh, CR would be involved in. Now, what I think that CR should do, uh, I think, one, we've settled the question about whether or not he can work this out, and it seems very clear that he can. I think he should have his New York lawyer, and I'm sure he has one of those good New York law firms, um, handle the matter for him. It's better for it to be handled there, I think, than for our firm to handle it. And if he would go to his lawyer in New York and after you've made your announcement, say, here's my problem. If that lawyer called me, or if C.R. Smith wanted to come to me first, I would run off a Xerox of the Jack yeah. Connor situation, and he'd have it very much in hand, and they could tailor it to fit his particular situation. That's good. What I'm saying is, as far as he's concerned, I believe we can give him the green light. Good. Second item, tomorrow and Friday is this month's meeting of the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. I have told the board that I will be there for the first hour tomorrow, and then I cannot stay through Thursday and Friday. I just am so pressed and harassed. They understand that. There must be a new chairman of the board. I have told each member of the nine-man board their vote is unanimous that the new chairman should be Max Taylor. Mm. Uh, it's a very natural selection. Sure, sure, it's excellent, excellent. Now, he has a great interest, he makes a great contribution, and we a, learned that the chairman must be a Washington man. When Killian was chairman, it really didn't work very sure. well because he lived in Boston. Second, also helps a lot if the chairman uh, has a personal relationship with the president. Sure. It'll be helpful to you because it keeps him up with every development in the intelligence field, which also keeps him very well informed through this difficult time. I, if the president authorized me to, I would, I would like to advise the board sure, 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 sure. tomorrow that it was to be my Sure, yes, sir. But uh, any question, uh, that give me a good excuse to have him these things too. It's official excuse, so he's not just checking over your shoulder or over Buzz's shoulder or something. It's, uh, it's, it, it proved very useful to me the yeah. last two years. Sure, you sure, have sure. Been something, and I had a title. Sure. And it, it will work just as well with him. And as, as you and I both have learned, uh, he's just as sound as. Let me ask you this: Do you observe the testiness that I observe? Uh, uh, not only in uh, Bob, but in Buzz? Um, I observe it in Bob, um, and I spent an hour with him yesterday morning. Uh, he's harassed, disturbed, and worried, and um, uh, I had a little different impression. I had just a little feeling almost of pity for him yesterday. He's got himself so wound up ideologically, but he, he still... He, still willing to do what you want him to do, and, and his loyalty is, is still there. Now, Buzz, I think, has, has really been under a lot of pressure lately. 
I think he gets it from the Joint Chiefs from one standpoint, he gets it from Westy from another, and then he gets it from Bob from another. And I think he's just buffeted and pushed around back and forth and pummeled until uh, he, <laughs> he speaks up maybe a little more, um, with a little more asperity than he thinks. Um, I, I understand it, I sympathize with him, and as the meetings go on, I have, uh, I, I think I've developed a good deal of basic confidence in the fellow, so that if he can be permitted to emerge from this present posture he's in, I think he can be enormously useful. It's just now that it's, it's like a horse that is constantly under a rain one hour and the lash the next hour, and it's a little hard for him to find. Well, he is uh, deteriorating very rapidly with me the last week, more so than all the four years I've been president. And he's not going to be much better than me if he goes another week like he has a last one, because I'm losing confidence in uh, what he said and the way he thinks. And he looks like to me he stumbles and he's thick and he's heavy and, and heavy 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 and heavy